Hello everyone, this is my Sidewinder version 6.1. I did two things new to this machine. Um, I added a secondary timing mark on the frame to show the upstroke adjustment. And then I also made it to where the thumb screw is ambidextrous. It can be on this side or this side. It's just a matter of taking this screw out, which retains the vice sleeve, and taking the thumb screw, putting it on the other side, and putting that thumb, this screw, on this side. And that will, um, um, this screw, like I said, locks in the vice sleeve. As far as a secondary timing mark, this is a really cool thing. Um, so you can see the timing mark on the cam, okay? And then you see these two marks here. This is the range for your stroke that's controlled by your stroke knob. So right now I'm on the high side of the stroke because you can see this mark on the cam when I roll is actually way higher than it should be. So that stroke would be pretty pretty long and your machine would run pretty rough. I just backed it off and you can see that line is matched up. You see it? That little line there on the cam is lined up with the line on the frame. If I back this out, I'm gonna go five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. I backed it out. And now it's on the shortest stroke. And I mean, it, it backs out shorter than that, but that's about the shortest that I feel this machine should be while running good and in, in the way I intended it to be. Um, there's also the impact screw, which is already been addressed on every other video I have. Um, the impact screw is this screw on the top of the frame here. It will eventually settle into the frame and your machine will go out of tune. Um, that controls how high up the armature bar sits. And one of the main reasons I put an O-ring on the armature bar is, see the O-ring, is so that when the impact screw settles into the frame too far, the, um, the O-ring will hit and so your machine will still kind of run. It'll just lose its snap a little bit and it'll be quieter. Some people actually like to back out the impact screw and just run off the O-ring. And you can add a couple more O-rings. There are 730 seconds inside diameter O-rings by 1 16th inch thick. I recommend EPDM O-rings. I usually send a couple extras with the machine. Now, turning the impact screw in, um, is gonna raise the bar. And you see what happens to that cam, that line on the cam as you raise it, it goes higher. You just wanna stay within the range. Let's see if we can get the, get a good angle for it. You, you just wanna stay within this little range there. Um, that's like the sweet spot of, of where this cam line should match up. And that's how you know you have proper impact. Cause what needs to happen is this cam needs to make a cycle, impact, and then pop over and then instantly retract. And if you don't have any impact, your machine is just gonna stutter and it'll like start like, feel like it's skipping or something and that's it. A big thing with this machine that, um, that people don't realize is if your machine cuts out, it may be because this screw here came loose. This screw here is the electrical connection. Um, if you, if it comes loose, then you may lose your electrical connection. So if your machine cuts out, just make sure that's snug. And don't try removing all this stuff because you could really screw up your motor with, um, with how it is. If, if you ever have to do it, email me and I can walk you through the steps. Let's set this thing up. With your needle, you do not have to put your needle on backwards. I made a little post about it and everything, but the most important thing is is that you put a bend up at the top here. And you put that bend so that, put a needle here or a nipple on this. You want it to where when the armature bar is up, it naturally wants to put your needle out of backward, like, you know, sucked back. So that when it comes up, it's, when it's naturally cycling, it doesn't want to throw the needle out. If, it, if you don't put a bend up here, when you come up, your needle's going to want to lift away. Even with a lot of rubber band tension, it's still going to want to lift away because this machine retracts so fast. If you can't get it to stop spitting, some tube tips 
it just seems that like when you flip your needle around the other way and do it the other way, considered the backwards way, um, it'll stop spitting. And that happened to me. And then I had other tube tips and then I was doing them backwards and it didn't go. And so I put my needle the other way and it worked. Um, a lot, and sometimes you, when you get different batches of disposable tips, you sometimes have to like slice that tip off because in the molding process, it might put a little booger on that tip. So I'll sometimes take a razor blade and just slice off the tip just a little bit more. And that seemed to help sometimes with spitting as well. Now, if you saw how I put the rubber band on, I put it over. And I like to just go ahead and make sure it's going on perpendicular right there to the needle. And then I twist and put it on. I tune all these machines to make sure this rubber band is sitting just about perfectly perpendicular because the position of the rubber band is going to affect the, the return spring tension. And they have more tension pushing up, the softer the machine will hit. If you have, if you accidentally, put, when you put your rubber band on, if you're not paying attention, it'll wanna be like this and the machine will be choppier. And, and this doesn't have hardly any tension. You feel it and there's just like, it's just mushy. And then it's gonna run and it's gonna be sloppy and it'll probably be spitting and everything else. So, listen to it and that's in the up. So now I'm gonna just put this parallel with the armature bar up. I'm putting it parallel. Sounds a little bit cleaner. If I want to hit softer, instead of changing the stroke, and I can, I can always just, See, now it's even way quiet. But I always tune them to be perfectly parallel or per perpendicular to the needle bar. See that? Okay. Now let's play around well with this, these stroke lengths. Right now, I kind of have it closer to the shorter stroke length. I'm gonna, just gonna back this out counterclockwise. Now it's about the shortest it should be at five volts. And it has a good clean sound, but it's also not abusive. Let's see where that stroke is on here. Um, that's about, with my calibrated eyeballs, I would say that is about right under three millimeters, maybe 2.7. Now I'm gonna turn this knob in. Watch, watch this line, what happens. I'm gonna go about five clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go seven. I don't know if you can hear that. No, I'll just do it while it's running. But that's your range. So when you want to start playing with stuff, you kind of know to stay within this range and you can kind of get used to it. And you know, some people, maybe if they're doing singles, they'll go get their machine, back it off. They'll back it off to the lower setting so it's on those shorter strokes. And with a single, I'm still running around the five volt range. That's 4.9. You can still back it out and back it out where it needs to be. Turning it all the way in, it's going to sound pretty loud at five volts and it might spit. But if you turn it up to five and a half, it'll kind of smooth out just a little bit. You can also, I'm on the high, higher end on my impact screw. Can you see that? Where my timing mark is when I push the armature bar down, roll this over, where I'm at there. Um, gonna back that out just a little bit. Just, just, I backed out the impact screw just to where my mark is on the low end of the, of the impact screw timing mark. I'm gonna lock this locking screw here. Make sure that's tight so it doesn't go anywhere. And now I can run my machine at five volts with a pretty long stroke. Let's see. That's a pretty, it's a pretty healthy stroke right there. And it's not too choppy. It's something to play with, but I have ranges on there. I have those lines so you know where you stay within the range that I intend it to work good. One more thing is that positive up, if your clip cord is marked properly, it will hit a little harder. It's gonna move the cam clockwise and it whips the armature bar down harder. If you put it positive down, it spins counterclockwise 
and it's a little bit more passive how it whips the bar down. So keep that in mind and not all clip cords are marked properly. So you may have to just feel with your thumb on this cam to see which way is clockwise and counterclockwise to, to how your clip cord is marked. This is from Brian Patton from Patton Manufacturing and all of the cords I've gotten from him have been properly marked. So keep that in mind. I sell them off my site. So, um, and, and I, I'm pretty sure that he's very mindful of marking clip cords properly. All right, thanks for watching.